Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, we want to specially welcome you to this week's episode of GLOAM Podcast, the official podcast channel of Global Emancipation Ministries, Calgary, Canada. Our mandate is liberating men through the knowledge of the truth and that's what the Lord will be doing through the episode you will be listening to shortly. We will like you to subscribe to this GLOAM Podcast channel on Anchor, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Overcast, Breaker, Radio Public, Pocket Casts, and other listening platforms accessible to you in order to keep receiving fresh episodes as they become available. That way you will not miss out on any revelation the Lord may be bringing your way through this channel. Please kindly subscribe, share the links and encourage your friends and family to subscribe as well. To learn more about this ministry, kindly visit our website at www.glome.org, and also remember to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn among others, and stay connected to keep abreast of important spiritual updates as they become available. May the Lord bless you mightily as you do all these in Jesus' name. Now the hour has come to be blessed again. Stay tuned and open your heart as our president, Anthony Adifarakan brings God's word to us from the throne of grace. Be blessed as you listen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for yet another week. Thank you so much for preserving our lives. Thanks for giving us the privilege to still be among the living. Lord, be glorified in the name of Jesus. Uh, This week we have come to learn at your feet again. We pray that you teach us. Pray that you correct us. If necessary, rebuke us. Give us the necessary knowledge we need to possess in order to live the life that brings you glory here on earth in the name of Jesus. Open our understanding that we might comprehend scriptures. Thank you so much for always answering our prayers. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Well, this uh, week we're going to be considering the Great Commission. Uh, The topic we're going to be considering for this week's episode of Glenn Podcast is the Great Commission. And uh, it's actually in two parts. So we're going to be taking part one. We're going to be taking part one today. And uh, by next week, if the Lord has not returned, we conclude by taking the Great Commission part two. And as text, we're going to be taking, uh, we're going to be taking Matthew 28, 16 to 20. We actually have four, so we're going to be taking this uh, Great Commission from the four Gospels. We're going to take some from Matthew, what the uh, what Matthew has to say about the Great Commission. We go on to Mark, what Mark has to say. We go on to the Gospel according to St. Luke. And we also go to the Gospel according to St. John. We'll be taking what the Great Commission is from these four Gospels. So let's start with Matthew 28. Matthew 28, I'll read verse 16 to 20. Mark 20, I mean Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even to the end of the age Amen so according to Matthew chapter 28 verse 16 to 20 the Great Commission involves going and teaching all nations now let's look at Mark chapter 16 Mark chapter 16 we read uh, verse 15 to 20 Mark 16 15 to 20 and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. 
Verse 19 says, So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. That's Mark chapter 16. The great commission as ordained by Jesus Christ, according to Mark 16, involves going and preaching everywhere. Going and preaching everywhere. And of course, for every word they preach, the Lord confirmed those words with signs following. Um, let's take Luke, Great Commission according to Luke. Luke 24. And by the way, I'm reading from the New King James Version in case it's different from what you are reading. Um, Luke chapter 24, I'll read verse 44 to 49. Luke 24, 44 to 49, Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem, until you are endued with power from on high. So the great commission, I mean the great commission, according to Luke chapter 24, as ordained by Jesus Christ, involved tarrying to receive the promised Holy Ghost, then going out and preaching the gospel. We take the fourth one, John chapter 20. We're looking at the great commission from the four gospels. John chapter 20, that we read. Um, I'll read verse 21, then I'll go and take chapter 21 and 15 to 17. So let's start with John 20, 21. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Then by the time to get to 21, chapter 21, verse 15 to 17, that says, so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Okay, so the Great Commission, according to John, involves the sending of the Holy Ghost and the feeding of God's people. Feeding of lamb, feeding of sheep, the young ones in Christ Jesus and even the ones who have been in Christ for some time. It involved teaching and feeding God's people. Okay, that's the Great Commission according to John chapter 20 and uh, John chapter 21. Now let's link these four gospels to Acts of the Apostles. Um, Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 8. Uh, that one says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. That was what Jesus said. He said, When the Holy Spirit comes, you will become witnesses. I remember he told them, I'm sending the Holy Spirit. It's already a promise. The moment he comes, he empowers you. You become a witness and you go out to preach. You go out to teach all nations. Let's also compare it with Acts 2, 38 to, 30, to 47. I'm going to be reading Acts chapter 2, verse 38 to 47. We are trying to explore this great commission. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Verse 40 says, And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. 
Then those who gladly received this word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Verse 44. Now all who believed were gathered, I mean, were together, and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. Verse 46. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of earth, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Hallelujah. You see the journey from commissioning to receiving the Holy Spirit to executing the commission and to having the result that was promised. The great commission was ordained by Jesus Christ himself. He was living. He was done. He was leaving the earth and he commissioned disciples to go and preach, to go and teach, to receive the Holy Spirit so that they don't have to do it in their own strength and to also you know, feed God's lamb, I mean God's people, the lamb and the sheep. Okay? And according to these acts, these disciples received the Holy Spirit and they became witnesses indeed. And that's how salvation is even, I mean, that's how it was able to spread. And that's how you can even begin to hear now, accept Jesus Christ. And it did not stop with these apostles. They also passed it down. You have also been saved in order to save others. So you, they were disciples. They have done their part. You are now a disciple provided you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. And you are also to get busy with this great commission. And if you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ before this episode is over, you will have opportunity to do so. So the power of the Holy Spirit came down and these disciples were enabled to carry out the Great Commission. Note, the preaching of these disciples attracted signs and wonders according to Mark 16, 15 to 20. Signs and wonders characterized the preaching. God confirmed the words they preached with signs following. Also teaching, the teaching attracted signs and wonders. The teaching equally attracted signs and wonders. You can look at Luke chapter 5, verse 17 to 26. Luke chapter 5, 17 to 26, or Mark chapter 2, 1 to 12. You can read Mark uh, chapter 2, 1 to 12 for that. The teaching attracted signs and wonders. And if you look at the pattern of Jesus in soul winning, that's Jesus' pattern of soul winning. Remember his mandate in Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. He already announced the reason he came. The Spirit of the Lord is upon him. He has come to open the prison doors to those who are bound. You know, he gave his mandate in that place. But if you look at his pattern of ministry, um, his pattern of soul winning, you can check Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Matthew 4, 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, <clears throat> excuse me, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. That, that's the way Jesus carried out his soul winning. Jesus went about. He didn't sit in one place. Okay? Because he already said he came to seek and to save those who are lost. He wasn't expecting members to come to his church. No. He was on the move. He was looking for sinners. Unlike some of us now that we build a very nice cathedral and we sit down and we are expecting sinners to come in. There's nothing with building cathedral, don't get me wrong, but if we are going to follow Jesus, we must seek in order to save, not sit in order to save. So Jesus went about all Galilee. What was he doing? He was teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. That's the way he ran his ministry. And if we are going to carry out this great commission the way our master did this, we also have to follow in his footsteps. We must go about, we must learn to teach the word of God, we must preach the gospel of the kingdom, not human ideas, we must be able to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Not in our strength, but the strength the Spirit of God provides. That's why I say don't go until the Holy Spirit comes. So that you don't go and use your strength. And you always you remember, you remember I said in Mark 16, it said, You will lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. So there's provision that Jesus can heal through us. So the Great Commission 
involves all these components. But for detailed study, uh, since this is just part one, uh, we're going to I'm going to highlight the components of the Great Commission that we're able to identify from these four Gospels. What are the components of the Great Commission? And uh, maybe in this episode, we can consider two and consider the rest uh, next week if the Lord has not returned. So let's look at the components of the Great Commission, not just any commission, the Great Commission as ordained by Christ Jesus himself. According to that Matthew 28, 16 to 20, and Mark 16, 15 to 20, they are quoted, and as well as Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3, that I already mentioned, the following components make up the Great Commission, meaning the 12 components I'm about to list, I'm about to I'm mention now, they make up the Great Commission. Great Commission as the following, as components. Number one, going. Going. You can't successfully carry out Great Commission until you have satisfied that goal. You know, he said, go therefore. Go preach. Go and teach. Go and make disciples. There is a going. Movement is involved in the Great Commission. Okay? There is preaching of the gospel. Number two. Number one is going. That's movement. Number two, preaching of the gospel. Number three, making of disciples. Number four, water baptism. Number five, teaching what we have been taught by the Lord himself. And of course, via his word. Number six, delegated authority. Number seven, assured divine presence. Number eight, continuation to the end of age. We're looking at the components of the Great Commission. Number nine, entire mankind has focus. The gospel is non-selective. Okay? Entire, human, entire mankind is the focus of the gospel, the whole world. Number 10, there's emphasis on believing. That means there's a responsibility of believing. The gospel cannot be forced on anyone. The one receiving the gospel must believe. So it emphasizes, it, it, there's an emphasis, the emphasis on believing. And that's the rest. There's a responsibility of believing on the part of the recipient. Number 11, accompanying signs like healing, deliverance, protection, you know, etc. There is always accompanying sign, accompanying the message. The Bible said the Lord went with them confirming the word. Which word? The one they preached with signs following until they preached there were no signs the moment they started preaching the lord began to walk with them and he made sure he confirmed every word they preach with signs following and a sign is a signature of god god is like saying i'm the i'm involved in this okay and number 12 the holy spirit directs or oversees and controls all the processes all the components are under the supervision and under the control and direction of the Holy Spirit. He controls all the processes. That's why he said, Tari, don't go yet. I know I said go, but wait. Let the Holy Spirit come before you go. That's the director. He's the one who will guide you. He's the one who will lead you. He's the one who will give you the concept. You can't be involved in the Great Commission when the Holy Spirit is absent. That's going to be frustrating. Hallelujah. So now, those are the components of the Great Commission. And let's consider the first two uh, in this episode. Number one says, go. That's the going. Okay? The place of going in the Great Commission. Jesus said, go. And some useful meanings of the word go from dictionary, I checked that. You know, there are some useful meanings of this word go from the dictionary. To go means to move or to proceed. To go means to move or to proceed. Alright? It also means to depart, to leave a place. It means to act, to perform, or to function as required. These are some of the meanings of uh, go. To move or proceed, to depart, and leave a place, to act, to perform, or to function as required. It also involves to seek. Remember I told you Jesus said to seek and to say. That's why he came. That's why he was going about. Didn't just sit down. To seek. To come into action, to begin, to contribute to an end result, etc. Those are some of the uh, meaningful 
I mean, useful meanings of go that I was able to see from uh, the dictionary. So the next question is, why go? Why go? I'm going to read Romans chapter 10 to you. Romans chapter 10. And I'll read verse 13 to 15. Romans 10, 13 to 15 says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. So why go? Because you have been sent. The Bible says, how will people hear unless you go? So you must go because you have been sent. Now, there are three ways to go. Now, this is a little bit uh, part of missions, but it's still great commission. So there are three ways to go, practically speaking. Because this is a mission, right? Number one, you can be directly involved in missions. You can go to the field directly. You can do full time. You can do short time. You can do part time. You know, weekend. You can go to the mission field and win souls directly on the field, physically. That is direct involvement in missions. Doing that, you are carrying out the Great Commission. Secondly, you can sponsor missions activities. You can sponsor missions activities. That is, you engage your resources, your intellect, your money, your connections, your gifts, your skill, you know, your expertise. You engage it towards sponsoring missions activity. You let your resources go for you. They say there is a crusade somewhere, you know, they need so so amount of uh, amount of money. You cannot attend, you cannot go there physically, but you decide to make some money available for those who want to go. You have gone. Maybe they use your money to print tracks, they use your money to rent instruments, to whatever it is that the Lord is doing on that mission field. You are involved. You have gone there. Your resources have gone. Even if it's your Intel is your, is your ability to plan. You plan the crusade or maybe some skills, whatever it is you have done. Or maybe there's a connection. You made a phone call to somebody to assist in making the uh, evangelism successful. You have gone as well. Being a sponsor involves going. It involves going. Or maybe you, you decide to probably uh, pay some money to some radio stations or television stations and you just tell, uh, you just tell them, Keep broadcasting this particular uh, broadcasting this particular message. All right, you put it on air for so many people to hear it. You might not have appeared to them physically in their houses, but you have gone as well, engaging your resources towards sponsoring missions activities. Equivates, I mean, it's equivalent to going. Okay. Thirdly, another way to go, you can pray. You can take up missions in intercessory prayer. Your prayers can go. You can get on your knees and start praying for mission feats, start praying for missionaries, start praying for those who are on the field doing the work, start praying for the souls in a particular location. Your prayers can go. Where you may not be able to go physically, your prayers can go there. So those are the three identified ways you can, I mean, by which you can be involved in this going. You can go directly, use your weekend, some of us go on vacation, we can as well go on missions, okay? Use your foot, you know, can be full-time, short-term, part-time, weekend, you can go. You can engage your resources and you can pray for missions and mission activities. You can visit our blog page on our website, uh, www.glem.org. You will see uh, there's, there's, uh, there's an article there called His Witnesses. It's in 1 and 2. His Witnesses 1 and 2. You can... Uh, visit our blog uh, blog page on that website for additional ways to go about this great commission okay secondly as i begin to round up the second way uh, the second component the place of preaching in the great commission we've looked at the place of going now the place of preaching in the great commission you read mark 16 15 and luke 4 18 what are you to preach the gospel simple not philosophy, not your mental opinion, not your not what not your view. 
according to John 3 16, Jesus is the only way to be saved, not one of the ways. You are not coming through Jesus, you are not being saved. He's the only way. No one gets to the Father except by me. Acts 8 5, Acts 9 19 to 20, and Acts 4 12. And take note of this we need to love sinners in order to reach out to them. That's important. And this should be consistent, it should be daily. You know, someone has said people don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. Love opens the heart of people to the gospel. You must love. If love is absent, their heart will be closed to the gospel. Nothing opens the heart better than genuine love and concern. When you genuinely love someone and you have concern for the fellow, they, they, it will warm their hearts and the gospel will have a nice place to land. It's like tilling the heart, cultivating it. And also, we don't and we shouldn't preach to sweet sinners. Never get on common ground. You are to preach the truth about Jesus, about eternal life. Preach the truth. Don't suit, don't preach to suit sinners. Don't preach the message that sinners are comfortable with. Say, I don't want to offend him, so let me come to the level, you know, common ground. You are talking to somebody who is involved in idolatry, for instance. Somebody who is worshipping idols. And this person is saying, oh, we are serving the same God. I say, yes, you are, you are really? We are not serving the same God with you, my brother. I'm not serving idols. I serve the living God. So don't try and come to me to the middle ground and say, oh, we are all serving the same God. You are not. There's only one God, the living God. Every other God is an idol. And they don't really exist anyways. Because they have eyes, they can't see. They have nose, they can't breathe. They have mouth, they can't talk. So don't preach to suit sinners. Preach the truth. It may make them uncomfortable. Remember, you are just a witness. Let the advocate complete his job. Alright? And preaching is for every believer. Not just ministers. You don't have to be a pastor to preach. You can read 1 Corinthians 9.16. We are to carry out this great commission and we are to start from where we are at Jerusalem. Start from your Jerusalem. Start from your office. Start from your church. Start from your local, I mean your, your environment. Start from your social media, your wall. Start from where you are and spread it from there. Okay? It's also important that you must study in order to minister the gospel effectively. 2 Timothy 2.15 talks about you studying, you know, so that you can rightly divide the word of truth. You must study the word of God and learn to preach what Jesus preached. Matthew 4.17-23, preach the kingdom of God. Preach repentance, alright? If you don't understand what the word of God says and you are preaching and there's a question and probably you don't even know where you are quoting from you are confusing the person you are preaching to you must know what you are saying so that you can help that sinner repent and come to salvation in Christ Jesus that's why you must not be lazy with Bible study know what the word of God says look at the pattern of Jesus and follow suit and lastly the first gospel that must be preached which every one of us must learn to preach the first gospel that must be preached that everyone we meet hears or perceive first is our character your character must precede your speech the first gospel that must be preached which everyone we meet must hear and perceive first is our character our lives must be consistent with the gospel if our preaching is going to be effective and not be seen as hypocrisy our lives must be consistent with the gospel that we are preaching if our preaching will not be i mean must not be effective and will not be seen as hypocrisy the Bible says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that winning souls is wise. Proverbs 11.30 Your life must bear good fruits. You can read Acts 11.26 and Acts 4.13 The first disciples were called Christians because they behaved like Christ. Don't, don't be a Christian because your name is Matthew or your name is Rebecca. Be a Christian because your life looks like that of Christ. It's my prayer that Christ will be glorified in our lives in the name of Jesus. And as we go out there to witness, to carry out this great commission, may the Lord walk with us and may the Lord give us testimonies, may the Lord give us fruits that we abide unto eternal life in the mighty name of Jesus. That is the word of the Lord. We take the part two by next week if the Lord has not returned. But in case you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, this is the time to do so. You want to say this prayer after me if you want to be born again. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot help myself and that's why I need your salvation. 
please come into my life today. Wash away all my sins and set me free from every bondage that sin has attracted into my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior today. Please write my name in the book of life and help me to live for you alone from now onward. Also fill me with your Holy Spirit and don't let me ever become a powerless Christian. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. We give you glory, honor, and adoration. Thank you for involving us in this great commission. The grace to carry it out in such a way that it will bring you glory release upon us in the name of Jesus. For your children who have accepted the Lordship of Jesus today, write their names in the book of life. Wash away all their sins and empower them for a life of fruitful Christianity in the name of Jesus. And when everything is over, help us to see your face in glory. Thank you, Father, for always answering our prayers. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We give glory to God for the revelation of his word. May we receive grace to be doers and not just hearers in Jesus' name. If you said that prayer of salvation, congratulations. You are now born again. You are a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Praise God. To learn more about this new life in Christ Jesus, please visit our website at www.glome.org for various helpful resources. We also want to invite you to be part of our weekly online Bible study that holds every Sunday at 5 o'clock to 6 p.m. Mountain Time via Zoom app. Click on the invitation banner on the homepage of our website to join the meeting from wherever you are, it's entirely online. God bless you as you do this in Jesus' name. Thanks so much for listening. Kindly share this episode with others so they too can be blessed, and remember to subscribe to this podcast channel. We will be here again next week for a fresh episode if the Lord has not returned. Until then, keep enjoying your freedom in Christ Jesus. God bless you.